Hi there, this is Rick. I hope everyone's having a great day. This is just a little test piece with the new camera. I'm just trying out the autofocus at the moment and uh, hopefully I'm perfectly in shot and uh, in focus. The background behind me should be very slightly blurred. If I move towards the background, uh, it might take a few seconds, but I should be once again completely in shot. And then if I move closer, I should come into shot and the auto uh, exposure should take over and I shouldn't look too white, although I do look quite white here. Um, there we go. I've noticed this HD camera really shows up any blemishes you've got on your face. So you've got to make sure you've got a really clean face, otherwise, um, uh, yeah, you can be quite scary. Um, but yeah, I'm starting to get my head around it all now and uh, it's it's interesting that it's uh it's very similar to uh like the old-fashioned dslrs and um because i used to do a lot of dslr photography or not dslr but um slr photography uh with the old-fashioned 35 millimeter um you know film and uh a lot of the stuff that i learned back then is sort of all come back into play again and um, I'm starting to really, it's all, it's all coming back to me, which is really good. Basically, you've got three things to worry about. You've got your ISO, your shutter speed, and your aperture. And uh, basically, with the old-fashioned SLRs, you didn't really have much choice to work around the ISO because the ISO was the actual film. So you'd buy like a, you know, like a, a 100 ISO film, put it in your camera, and then... Uh, the only two things you could really adjust were your, your aperture and your shutter speed. But with the modern DSLR um, cameras, ba they can alter the ISO at any time they want. So it's basically like loading a, a new piece of film into the camera for every single separate shot. So that gives you this massive scope and spectrum for much more creative shots. So, you know, if it gets a little bit dark, in the old fashioned days, you'd have to replace the film with a, a film of a higher ISO rating. But now the camera just automatically whacks up the ISO and then you've still got this broad spectrum between having a small aperture and a big aperture, depending on the depth of field that you want. So at the moment, I've got quite a, um, a big aperture, which basically leaves, puts a lot of light into the camera and it gives you this kind of very narrow depth of field. So I kind of, um, I'm in focus here, but the background behind me is kind of blurred away and sort of, you know, almost got rid of. But uh, obviously if I move back, um, it does take a, a, a second or two for the, the focus to keep up with me, but I should be a lot sharper. And obviously the closer I am to the background, uh, the, um, the clearer it becomes. So, like I said, I'm just, this is literally just my first time I'm using it. Now I've mounted the Zoom H1 microphone onto the top of the Canon and the whole thing sat on a tripod. Uh, so this is basically the very first test. I have no idea what this is going to sound like, but I'm hoping it's going to sound just fine. Okay, that's it for this first test little bit of video. Uh, hopefully there'll be more interesting um, shots uh, as the uh, the week progresses or the uh, you know I'm not sure of any time scale here uh, the weather outside is most foul at the moment um, but um, we've got some nice sunny weather coming soon so hopefully I'm going to go outside and do stuff so until then have fun and I'll see you in the next video take care